I was injured in 1986. I was in a car wreck. Um, classic, what they call lap belt injury. Uh, front and collision, I had a lap belt on in the back seat and uh, it's really common in front and collisions to have uh, spinal cord injuries because when the body, when the car stops and the body tries to fly forward, it's just held at the hips, not the shoulders and the hips. So it just kind of goes like that. So, but I'm an old man, becoming an old man in wheelchair years. I'm a soccer player and a baseball player by inclination. Um, I started playing tennis in the early 90s, but I didn't play until uh, I went, I mean, I went to college and then I moved to San Diego. And in San Diego, in 97, I got in touch with the local, uh, the program. And it kind of blew my mind getting in a tennis chair. Uh, I'd, I'd hit tennis balls, but only in like my everyday chair, which is, you know, great for every day, but tennis is a different kind of, different kind of motion. And uh, so I didn't see what the big deal was about wheelchair tennis until this program had a couple of tennis chairs. And when I got in one, that, that's what did it. It was, it was you know, the, the heavens opening up and you know, all of that revelatory stuff. And uh, by nine, that was 97. By 98, I was in A's. By 99, I was in Open. By 2001, I was on U.S. national team. It's just, I, I went to it pretty fast. In 2002, I vanished for eight years, nine years. Um, I needed a change. I'd put so much into it so fast um, that I burned out, is, you know, the shorthand. And uh, I needed to do something else. And uh, so I went to graduate school, I got my master's, taught for a while, traveled a lot, you know, without a wheelchair, without a tennis chair. And about almost two years ago, um, I started to get the itch. I started to become really curious just about how I would do if I trained, if I, you know, committed myself to it. So I started really playing uh, last summer. Uh, my wife actually uh, encouraged me. She knew I'd always wanted to try to make the Olympics and I never had. And uh, so in the summer of spring of 2011, she was like, you know what, you've always wanted to do this. Why don't you try to do this? And lo and behold, I did. So I'm pretty charged up about tennis right now. If I'd stuck around 10 years ago and maybe I could have made, you know, Athens, but it would have been awful. I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have appreciated what it meant. And I certainly don't think I could have shared it, you know, with everybody who shared it with me. It became, my parents went, you know, we have friends that went, my wife went, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the kind of thing where I'm there and it was like, I did this all chest puffed up and whatnot. It was like, we did this and we all did this together. And, uh, that was really humbling, and um, it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. And I'm so charged up about it. I'm already thinking about the next one. <laughs> I want to go to the next one, too. Oh, I got smoked. Uh, I, uh, I drew the 10 seed, um, and he's quite good. But my achievement was making it. You know, how I did there was, I don't want to say it wasn't important to me, but it was, what was important to me was to go play in a way that I would be proud of. And, you know, win or lose, that's, that's not what I was worried about. And so when I drew this guy for about three hours, I was pretty black. I was pretty unhappy. I was like, gosh, you know. But you know what? I got, I got out a little bit and I took a train into London and I walked around and I just kind of soaked up the atmosphere, which was really, really good. And I, that's when I remembered that how I did was less important than the fact I was here in the first place. Now my big tennis, like competitive worry was that I would be shown to be a fraud, you know, that I didn't belong. And, you know, he beat me one and two, but I made him work for it. And I'm pretty happy with how it went, you know? I mean, he's quite good. Sometimes you just gotta tip your cap to the better player. One of the quad players here um, is a, a guy that I met uh, 10 years ago or so 
when he's from when he's from San Diego, and I was volunteering at a, a rehab hospital when he came through, and that was about the time that I was, you know, I was getting burned out and about to, you know, go away. But I was there in rehab to kind of help out, you know, the new injuries because they don't necessarily know what life in a wheelchair is all about, right? And uh, so then I went back to school and I kind of disappeared from tennis for a while. And about five or six years after that, I went out to our little local program again. Just I thought it'd be fun to go hit tennis balls one night, right? And there's this guy there and he's like, Steve Baldwin. I'm like, yes, it's Greg. Greg got into tennis partly because I wouldn't shut up about it when he was in rehab. And now he's here and he's been a quad player for several years and he's been to Australia and he's toured and he's, and uh, you never really know, you know, the ripple effect, how what you do is someone's gonna see and how that's gonna affect, you know, somebody else. Um, wheelchair tennis community is a pretty neat little community in that, you know, I don't know, I don't know how else I would have met uh, people from all over the world and been all over the world except for this game you know and uh, I'm pretty grateful to it for that